All right, ladies and gents, welcome, welcome. We've got some Serengeti and a very open map here between two players that are certainly no strangers of it. Uh, this is part of a series. It's a best of three in Titans League Silver. And uh, the winner of this series will move on to play a best of five. And if they win that, they have to play another best of five. And then if they then they should be good. You have to win four rounds, and then you qualify to gold, which confirms you in the top 50 in the world. Uh, certainly very tough to get there, though. We've been looking at top-tier talents all day. And the fact that, like, you know, player like Survivalist or Tomate could win here, and they're probably not even a favorite in the next set, tells you how stacked those brackets can be. But we're not going to talk as much about that. We're going to talk about the game, and the map is open, and we have Survivalist going for the Malay. I know Survivalist pretty well, and I think he's a really good ladder player. And there was a large period of time where he would go tower rushing with Malay. Because you advance faster to the next stage with Malay, most people will instead delay clicking up to the next stage. Because for a normal strategy, you get up so fast on like 19 or 20 pop that you can't afford to make buildings. But what you could afford to make is towers. So if I had to guess right now, just knowing Survivalist, I would say that he's going to actually go for towers. Now, what I would describe about um, Tamate is that he's a talented player. However, I think he's better when it comes to hybrid maps. So I don't know what home map he's going to pick, but I would expect like Golden Swamp or Cross or something like that. He's really good on those settings. Uh, wow, almost had an issue with an elephant there. But he has gone for the more standard pick here, where he's going to try and go for scouts. Um, I have probably played both of these players over like uh, 40 or 50 times. <laughs> I've played the, these guys a lot. And I was trying to think of my favorite. And I would have to see the draft, honestly. But I think I give Survivalist a slight favorite. I, I think he's a slight favorite because of... There's quite a few closed maps in the pool, and I think he's only going to have to want to play on one hybrid. But it's pretty close to 50-50. Also, we're going to put Tomate as red because of his name, because he's from Spain, and also because it's just easier to see. So someone pointed that out. So he's now a, a, a tomato color, a.k.a. Tomate. All right. But yeah, I mean... I could be wrong about the strategy for Survivalist, but still really feel like this is going to be Towers just because of what I've seen from him in the past. You could just go for Archers or Scouts or Infantry. You could go for a standard opening. Uh, and I think that Malay is like... I, I think they're a bit underrated on standard openings because that age-up time is pretty wild. So uh, The other maps are... Cross and Ravines. Okay, so Tamate definitely picked Cross, which is what I had expected, right? Actually, I in the future, if anyone ever plays Tamate, you should definitely ban Cross. Sorry, Tamate. <laughs> I'm surprised Survivalist didn't ban that, but he probably didn't know. Um, yeah, and then and then Ravines makes sense because it's like a, a map that can go on for a very long time, and, and Survivalist's weakest point in his play is probably... Dark Age, Feudal Age, but the longer the game goes, the better he can be. Good question. So, Slackbreaker, the way the first map is selected, um, you'd, it'd be easier if someone linked to the draft for you, but basically you have ban, ban of maps. So, back and forth, ban, ban. Pick, pick. And then, ba 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 ban. You just go back and forth, ban, 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 banning, banning maps. And then after you ban maps, there's one map remaining, and that's your game one. So, you kind of have a say in what the first game is, but it's not in the traditional sense. So it's the best way to have like a mutual uh, pick, so to speak. And Survivalist is up on 21 pop, which isn't that crazy. And Tamate's just going to take these goats here because Survivalist didn't do anything with them. A bit odd there from Survivalist and a bit sloppy to just lose 200 food like that. And there he goes on the way to the next stage. Okay, so I'm ex assuming we're going to see scouts here. Really like this lumber camp from Survivalist. It's actually really efficient for all the villagers, and it's actually kind of easy to wall them in as well, for now anyways. 
This lumber camp is also really good. Like, that's the way you want to make lumber camps on this map. You want to make it in the wood because of all the gaps. There's usually a spot. He kind of did the same over here. <clears throat> all right. Well, survivalists probably won't be surprised to see scouts. Remember, the Hindustanis have cheaper villagers in each age. And they've got some great weapons that they can get to later on. For the Malay, it's not necessarily going to be their weapons. It's just going to be the fact that they have better eco. Um, but losing 200 food there was really bad for survivalist. I mean, it didn't even show a reaction there. I think he could have popped out and he could have taken one back. And that might actually change his whole strategy here. Like, I think he wants to go for a stable, but now he's like, I need farms. So he might just go spear defense and he does get slightly housed here. And Tomate's scouts are coming forward, obviously going to be looking for villager kills. Nice hit there from Survivalist. And I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with Survivalist position as long as he does get the farms down. He just can't counterattack, but he's not, you know, that, that very much suits his style. Like, this is not something you see Survivalist do a lot. It, it, he doesn't open strong, typically. Yeah. But what he does do is he stays in the game, stays in the game, and oh, found his goats. Better late than never, and then... He's able to dominate in the later stages, which I guess is also kind of the melee too, in some ways. Because you spend less time researching the next to go going up to the next stage. Well, nice, old, oh, nice blocking there from survivalist. Uh, because of that fact, you do have extra vills in most cases. Though survivalist got town watch and also was housed, so kind of eliminates that lead for now. Oh, man. It feels like Scout Skirm will be such a problem for Survivalist. He needs Scouts. His Skirms are great against the Spears. He's going to go to Gold now, which has me all confused at the moment. But he's defended nicely. Got our first kill of the game right there. Tamate must be thinking, well, this is my time to do damage. My opponent doesn't have army right now. Like, he has zero army. I've got to go kill him. The eco is fine, but it feels like the perfect eco to have military buildings with, right? Like, Survivalist doesn't have archer ranges. He doesn't have stables. But Tomate's been a little sloppy. Didn't take a hit there. And wow, Survivalist actually getting a market? Well, there's not enough scouts to just massacre villagers, but they'd whittle them down for sure. And now Survivalist adds a stable. So this is him surviving. He's, he put himself in an awkward spot, a spot that you would never really want to be in. It's not ideal. Let's see how he manages this, and let's see if Tamate can actually finish the guy off, because he's got to use the skirms against the spearmen. And he still only has three scouts. Okay, villagers exposed. Still no villagers killed. Oh, man, the micro is so insane here. It's so intense for both of them. It's not easy. And now Survivalist adds a tower, because he knows this is getting out of hand. I think, though, if you see the tower, you're actually kind of okay with this if you're Tamate. Um, I think you just have to make more scouts and you kill the vills everywhere else. The survivalist trying his best to save villagers here and will do so and traps the scout on the other side. And now he's making scouts. Oh my god! Oh, he almost trapped it. The ranged units were a great idea from Tamate, but he just didn't have the scout numbers here, guys. There was villagers here he could have killed, villagers here he could have killed. Survivalist still in it. And he sells all of his wood and he buys food. So he's just leaning on that market. Really hard to micro in these scenarios, to be fair, though. So it's, it's not something that I can be too judgmental on. Like having to pull back the scouts all the time. Not so easy. Okay. Spearmen also need to be a focus if you want to add more scouts back into the mix. And I think Tamate is just confused. And also castle my king with the... Crazy Dono, thank you for that. Holy. I appreciate that, and you're welcome. I'm doing my best out here, so. <laughs> Survivalist has just been able to get by, and, and I think, like, you know, if you look at the top 20, Survivalist would have lost six vills already. There would be one or two additional scouts, the micro would have been slightly better, and Survivalist would be done. But he's staying alive, and he's in, I think, the better position. Bought the stone for that tower. That protects his only wood line. Maybe even in a position to counterattack soon. 
And he could shift back over to this wood line if he needs to. You can see Tamate is like had set the gather point forward with the other bits of army he had. Because he wanted this to meet up with the other group. Oops, sorry about that. That's a mouse misclick. And survivalist. I, I think he's gonna go elephants, man. <laughs> elephants would make so much sense here, right? You have food, you have gold. Yo, we're gonna see elephants. He better go elephants. That's the gamer move. Um, hey T90, isn't there a risk players use live cast like yours to see the whole map? Uh, there is a risk, but this is a recorded game. And oftentimes there's a delay based on what the caster sees and what everyone else sees. So uh, there are there are rules that kind of account for that. So this series was played a little bit earlier in the day. And yet Survivalist is just getting by. Like he made way less army. Tamate wasn't solid enough with the micro and the pressure to be able to get the damage done. And again, I'd love to see a Survivalist taking some nice trades. I personally would love to see a stable. Like, Malay uh, elephants are really cheap. I mean, his eco balance is, is also really crazy. Let's see what Survivalist plans on doing with this. He's abandoning food. Okay. <laughs> okay. You gonna go for a TC? Are you gonna boom? He's gonna make a couple elephants. There's nothing more frustrating, by the way, than making all of that army and then having these extra scouts just pick off villagers like you weren't able to do the entire time. It, these archers will contribute nothing for Tamate. He's, he's shell-shocked right now. He can't believe this is happening. And he probably will lose a villager to these scouts. Not the best grouping there for survivalists, so maybe not. Okay. No real pressure for survivalists at all this game. He just doesn't have any interest in it. Drops the town center. Lots on stone. Like he wants to drop a castle and go for Karambit Warriors. A little misclick there for him. He placed a lumber camp. Maybe he... Oh, he doesn't have a blacksmith yet, of course. Tamate clicks up at a reasonable time with the amount of pressure that he put down. But he just didn't kill the vills he would have wanted. And here he goes now. Now we have husbandry for these elephants as they're going to go in here. That's a lot of HP. That is 750 HP against 159. I know your micro is good, Tamate, but that's just a lot of work. And it seems to me like he really wants to commit towards the archers. He's got more archers coming. Crossbowman and Bodkin Arrow on the way. Husbandry makes the elephants faster, but they're not faster than the archers are. They're more along the lines of the same speed, I think. Uh... Yeah, just like 0 0.02 speed slower. Which is enough. And the crossbows are now looping over here. And Survivalist just continues to, well, survive. He's got a villager lead. But he's not been aggressive at all. And this is what I thought would be so cool between these players. Because they're so different from each other. But again, it's the same thing as before. If you don't do damage with all this investment, you're left with a worse eco. And then Survivalist can push you back. And the husbandry move, the elephants is just enough. The scorpion's going to be just enough. And the eco is better for survivalists. So he lost three vills. We do have a second town center now for Tamate. But Tamate's got to be thinking like, oh my god, what do I do right now? Great game. Great game from both players. The worry I ha would have if I'm survivalist is, what's my long-term unit comp? But I think he's actually going to go Karambit Warriors. Which is actually a really good unit against the Civ that can't make knights. That's an amazing unit against the Civ that can't make knights. Only other thing Hindustanis could do would be... I mean, I think the Ghulams would be okay, but I think they'd lose out. Oh god. 5 HP Elephant, 3 HP Skirmisher. Oh, there's something going on over here. But this is more interesting. There's something going on over here, too. But this is way more interesting. Oh, you can get it. You can get it. Get it, elephant. Go. Go. Got him cornered. GG. Well played. All right. Crossbow's looping around. Ballistics on the way now. Castle on the hill. Survivalist knows he's exposed on that side. He knows he's locked down over here. Elephants and scorpions. 
Starts to lose some villagers, though. He hasn't killed a single vill this game. His only counterattack was with scouts. Uh-oh, Ballistics is in. Castle will go up. It's just how many villagers will Tamate kill? One, two. Nice dodging from Survivalist. Very well played. Tamate's going to have to back out of here. And this is actually a real force now. Like, <laughs> this is not something you thought you'd have to deal with. Wow. Elephants and scorpions. It's so good, though. It's really good. No one, like, very few players will actually play into this composition. And the weakness is really the early game and how exposed you leave yourself. But his eco's great. You kind of need, like, monks, I think, if you're Tamate. But certainly, this is not something he's trying to do at the moment. Like, Pikeman's not a great idea, right? Because the Scorpions are there. So you, you really need to have conversions, I think, to help you out. And, oh, man, Tomate's really... He's good runner work with the Spearman, but he's really out of ideas at the moment. I think he's trying to buy time so he can complete that Town Center. Normally, you see Town Center number three come up in a boomy game. Survivalist, though, with Karambits, with Elephants, with Scorpions, man. And I don't actually mind this. I don't mind just taking out the buildings. Because that's the only army your opponent's making. Now, I think counterattacking is, is a great idea right now if you're Tomate. But if you do that, then Survivalist obviously is going to know um, that you're not at home. And then maybe dive bomb your town center. So it's really tricky. Survivalist is trying to raid with a couple Karambits. Really trying to take control now of the sides. Love the town center. Unfortunate for him, he can't town center the gold, but it's still next to it. And these Malay elephants, as the Legend of the Liar showed us a year or two ago, guys, they're actually really good. And they're especially good at taking out buildings, too. Uh, this is interesting. I wonder if Survivalist will notice this. He does. Okay, because he's going to town center that gold now. And I don't see a way back for Tamate the way this game is going. He doesn't look like he has an army comp. He knows what he, he can do something with. There's potential for Survivalist to just loop in on both sides with little Karambit raids. The main ball still can't be dealt with. And Survivalist economy is, is perfect at home. Why did he go Scorps when there were no spears out yet? The Scorpion, like if you're only going to have Siege against Archers... This isn't a perfect way to describe it, but this is probably the best way to break it down. So if you're only going to have Siege against Archers, you go for the Mango in most cases, if you have the gold. If you're going to have a combination of a Knight unit, or in this case, an Elephant, and uh, Siege, Knight Scorpion or Elephant Scorpion is generally pretty good. Now that is sloppy there from Survivalist. That's not something that normally happens, but I think he may have reacted to this. And that shows you the beauty of counterattacking. And suddenly, Tamate, he can convert all these elephants. And that's not something Survivalist will want to see. To lose his elephants, his opponent will then have elephants, which makes the scorpions less effective. He's going to have to macro like a madman at home and prep for his next plan. Still completely forgot about these. I feel like these running back into the farming eco was the original plan. Now we're going to have camels, it looks like. From Tamate. Again, an amazing game here, right? Like, I knew these two would be so close. Those Hindustani camels in com combination with the crossbows are pretty good. But, like, I don't know. The camels aren't that great against the elephants. You're kind of okay seeing your opponent make a few camels, too, if you have a castle. I think survivalists should just commit to the Karambit warriors now. A couple Karambits heading back here right now. Okay... Mm now, the thing about a Karambit is they're really low HP, and they're really low base attack, but they're also half population space, and they're cheap. So, I, I, we're not seeing heavy commitment from Survivalist on them, actually. He's not making much army at all right now. But it is something. It's still 7 attack. And Survivalist has been on this gold, and Red noticed it because he had a Spearman over there earlier, and Survivalist reacts to it. And Tamate is going to have to react to this. And hasn't done so yet, but now he reacts. But then again, you, you like get kind of sucked out of other positions and other areas you want to focus on. Castle here would be epic for Survivalist, because then you have so much stone and gold locked down. 
this gold is actually really important, but he can't take it right now. The TC is actually going to go down. I feel like Survivalist senses this well. It's like he knows this TC is a target. And he's just trying to get the relics for the late game. Uh, that should be a uh, dead monk there, but does get a conversion too. And okay. 18 to 3 Eco KD. But I think the economy is stronger for Survivalist, or at least slightly stronger. And I think we'll have a better position too, because he's going to have two castles while his opponent will have one. And he'll be in the Imperial Age, though I'm not sure what his plan is. As Actually, as I say that, the Karambits come in. Yeah. It's the last thing Tamate would ever expect in the back of his base, because the units were sitting there idle for so long. It's like it was part of the strategy to forget about them. <laughs> and this will mean Tamate gets gold. Tamate is also clicked up to Imp, but he's so exposed, man. Like, I could be wrong, but I feel like just raiding with Karambit Warriors wins you this game. Look, he's sitting over here as well. Also really smart. Just research things in this TC because you don't want to produce out of it anymore. What's your unit composition if you're Tamate? He's going to make more crossbows. He doesn't get Arbalest with the Hindustanis. Are the Malay a counter? I don't think they're a counter. But I actually I don't think they're bad because they don't rely on stable units. And... Sure, they can go into archers, which Hindu Sunnies could, in theory, counter. But then you, their unique unit is better, I, I, though I haven't seen a lot of it, than the Ghulam. I also think it's a style thing. I think that the way Survivalist plays is very suited for Malay. And this is an economy that cannot be raided right now. Also, Survivalist has the relic advantage. What he really needs is gold control, and he's going to get that on the left. And he's just got random Karambits everywhere. This must be super annoying for Tamate. And every time he deals with one Karambit, there's going to be another Karambit showing up. Oh, was Handcart denied? That's kind of funny. Yeah, Tamate is going to have such tough work on his hands if Survivalist continues to do this. My thing is, Survivalist needs to actually go for like a Death Ball push as well. And it looks like he's massing for it. Look how, look how many Karambits he has in Q. Oh my goodness. There's a castle going up. This Karambit though, getting more kills. More and more villager kills. This is obviously a very important area for Tamate, who has seen a decent amount of the map, knows this TC has gone up as well, but now sees the Karambits and is like, what? What is that, man? You have to go chemistry and you have to go for hand cannons. If you're Hindustani's here, you absolutely need to click chemistry. He's going to go Hussar. Ooh, I don't know about that one. I mean, he wants mobility. By the way, MVP Karambit over here doing a great job. And I get wanting mobility. I don't mind the Hussar. But I think if you can get chemistry at the same time, that would be ideal because then you can mix it later. And now Survivalist is getting handcarded. Very clean play from Survivalist. Great job from Tamate. Ever since he didn't do the damage early on in Feudal. You don't get ARP. Like, th this is a Castle Age army. Granted, I mean, Survivalist is missing some defense upgrades, but maybe attack should be priority anyways on a unit that has so little HP. Ooh, units are actually able to get out of here, though. Uh, be curious to see where the next couple castles go. It feels like a castle here or here is needed for Tamate. Let, let's see how this fight goes. Uphill for Survivalist. No Castle Age armor. The Hussars didn't get the position they wanted here. They would have wanted to be in front of the crossbows, protecting the crossbows. I think the Krambits will do a pretty decent job here. And then they're so cheap, right? So he could have like 80 of them. Yeah, they're amazing. And then look at him go. He's got more on the ready. 54 of them. And it only takes up 20-some population space. Also, I mean, he's got better food eco as well, right? So there's that. I think his next castle should go here, Survivalist, to secure more stone and gold. And he's even going to try and be greedy and take that gold right now. 
But this has to be tracked, right? You absolutely have to track this. There's just so much blue everywhere. Yeah, this is wild. I don't think you can stop this right now if you're a Tomate. There's just too many fires to put out. Survivalist will have to react there, and he'll lose villagers here. And it's a great castle from Tomate on this side. Tomate's playing out of his mind, but how does he deal with this, and how does he deal with this? I guess the only positive is he's already taken that gold. Wow, this is crazy. Well, hold on a second. The Hussars and the Elephant could kill all these villagers, too. But how do you kill the Karambits? There's 87 of them! And they'll be, they'll be fully upgraded now. They haven't been fully upgraded this whole time. Even if Survivalist loses 20 vils, he still has so much economy that's untouched in his main base. And it's so easy for him to make more Karambit Warriors to just clear up the sides. Sick play from Survivalist here, game one. Karambit Warriors, Serengeti. And Serengeti has brought more variety in Silver League than we saw in Gold League and Platinum League Season 1 combined. Just saying. <laughs> uh, I think it's time to cancel the whole concept and, like, the best players don't even get to play anymore. We're just going to make it for the guys that are out of the top 50 just for content. Because <laughs> seriously, we, we've seen so many crazy strats. This is amazing. Props to the players, obviously. There's still no answer. Even if you raid, there's still no answer to the Karambit Warrior. I think it all comes back, though, to how the early game was played. Survivalist was so exposed. Tamate couldn't get the job done. He couldn't kill Vils. He could have killed, like, five or six Vils in Feudal, had a faster castle time, snowballed it from there. Didn't get... Wasn't able to make that happen, and... It's game one, right? So, he's gonna fight on. He's probably going to be shocked when he sees his population is what it is, though. 84 population. And these little karambits are everywhere. 115 of them. Again, they take up half a population space, these little karambit warriors. TCs will go down. Chemistry could even be denied if Survivalist wanted to go after the university, but I don't think he really cares. He's got these little termites all over the map right now. So... Obviously, well played. TC will also melt. Arson's on the way, too. Squires wasn't in. Castle will complete. There's no way you stop this if you're Tamate. Tamate can't believe it. And he calls the GG. What a unique use of the melee there. Yes, there were weaknesses in the early stages. It did get rough around the edges here. But you know, we got to see so many bonuses in the melee. From the advancing faster to the next stage. Which is just going to happen regardless. But then the cheaper elephants in combination with the scorpions looked good. But then also the Karambit Warriors. Uh, felt like the defensive castles were well-timed from Survivalist. And it felt like right after he lost his elephants, and then his opponent continued to make crossbows, it was clear that Tamate didn't know what to do. <laughs> because you don't get Arbalest. And you don't get Knights. So, camels aren't going to be the way to do that either. It was actually a really good unit to have. I gotta love the most created unit, by the way, at 195. Still took up less than 100 pop space, by the way. Maleo P? Question mark? 10,000 more resources collected there from the winner of game one. We gotta have ourselves a series, guys. Remember, I think Tamate's a beast on cross, so I'm curious to see what happens in the next game. Uh, we're gonna move on to that now. All right, ladies and gents, welcome, welcome. Uh, here we have more round two action. This is game two in a best of three. And Tamate needs to win this one. Otherwise, he's out. Survivalist looked good in the first game. Very good. And actually, he's gone for a great civilization here. I don't know what their drafts are, but I would normally expect to see Japanese, Lithuanians, or Byzantines before uh, a civ like Huns. But I think Tamate has maybe gone for more of a comfort pick. Uh, it is a good Civ on this map, and it might even be in that top 10. But a civilization that could be vulnerable against the Japanese if the Japanese are able to take this to water. Uh, now, the beauty of Huns is that once you get to, like, mid-feudal, uh, you don't have to make houses. Well, sorry, you don't have to make houses at all the whole game. But you really start to feel that benefit once you make it to mid-feudal. Uh, and also, I think if you have a safe pond or two... Having the faster producing stables, but also having the cheap cav archers is normally a game changer. But if I'm survivalist, I'm I'm really trying to use every single bonus I have here. Like, 
I'm going heavy on the fish because if my fish get attacked with Japanese, they're stronger. So I should be fine. I'm trying to use the flexibility of the cheaper lumber camps, mining camps, etc. To go for man-at-arms, applying early pressure with that. And then I also think it makes a lot of sense to try and take the Huns off their pawns. And so what players will try and do with the Huns is they'll try and wall to the edge of the map. But this is pretty open here, right? It's not going to be a possibility, so Tomate's going to have to defend his water. We'll we'll see exactly how things pan out here. But, and really fun series I think this is going to be. I think this could easily go to the third game. We will see a dock for both players. Most likely on the same side, actually. We'll probably have the survivalist go over here. And then Tomate will be more to the north, but still the same, like, eastern side of the map. Um, since one of the rocks in the lakes, that's always been there. Uh, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't, like, affect the play. That's been there for a long time, I think. 1890, will we have Hidden Cup 5? Question mark. Man, if I had a dollar for every time I got that question. Yes, we will. Uh, as for when, no details released. No information, but I'll make sure the whole world knows when it happens. Thanks for being pumped for it, though. <laughs> um... Now, I guess this is more of a question from the previous game. But yeah, I think, you know, hand cannons definitely could have been an option for Tomate in the previous game. I still think he would have struggled a little bit because of how slow hand cannons are. But um, definitely something that I think Tomate had forgotten about and should have relied on a little bit more. Okay. So, Tomate is going to check the water. You can see he's going to start to fish now. Something survivalists could start a little faster. Just because of the cheaper lumber. Um, survivalists should also check the water. And my favorite thing about this is how thorough he's been. Man, he even scouted this shoreline, which is like... Excessive, to say the least. But I guess if your opponent was here, it would be helpful. It's funny, he's been thorough, but he's actually going to miss this one. But he might have to double back and see... Again, hoping to fish. And more should start transitioning over to wood here for these guys as the food is going to be banking up and they're going to be thinking about feudal. The survivalist has not seen any of the docks. So this might eliminate water play from his potential strategies. And definitely seems like it could have been something he'd try. So we'll see if he heads back over. I feel like if he sees this wood line, though, he's going to know that there's no way that Tamante would go to the other side. He really just has to find his opponent, and then he might double check. Oh, my God. <laughs> he's so unlucky right now. <laughs> oh, my God. That is really unlucky. But, yeah, now he should know that the dock should be that side. And, wow, he's going to go for a crazy wall. More wood. He seems worried that Huns are going to go scouts, which happens a lot, so... Okay. Um... Holy walls from survivalist. No man-at-arms for him. Not even a fourth fishing ship for him right now. Okay, he's going to add it now, which makes sense. And double lumber camp on the same wood line for Tamate. If he loses access to this, that could be game-ending. So I, I'm personally just trying to pick up on what these guys are doing. You can see Tomate was checking to see if there was a dock there from Survivalist. And now he's going to see the scout from Survivalist. And it looks like he wants to go scouts. But he's definitely going to try and dock Survivalist Pond. I think Survivalist is going to play this game the same way he played the previous game. He's going to try his absolute best to just like not die. And he's not going to make army at the start. Which is super greedy. Like, he's just going to try and sneak fish down here and see if he can get away with it. And hide behind walls in the meantime. I'll be honest. I don't think it's great. <laughs> I think there's a, um... I think there's a limit to how successful this can be. And that limit would probably be, like, 100 elo higher, maybe. But let's see how locked down he is with what could possibly happen here because the scout could kill the vill! And Tomate noticed it. Now, Tomate's scout is coming. But Tomate had his scout ready. 
His scout was on more HP. He didn't chase down survivalist. What an important moment. No way. That's so unfortunate for Tomate. But at the same time, guys, you have to know. You have to know that, that he's going to be looking for that. You knew his scout was weak. I don't know what happened. He didn't chase survivalist scout, which is the common thing when they meet in the middle like that. And one scout is weak. And so that's just not going to be on his mind anymore. So that whole strategy could have worked out. It could have contested the fish. Survivalist now queues up more fish after the fire galley here. And even more fish down here. So it's like the same approach as last time. Just defend and add eco. A survivalist made a fire instantly. This is true. So now he's like kind of protecting the shoreline. And then we have uh, Villager over here. Now, for Tomate, he's making scouts. He's making skirms. He's applying pressure. I've died to him before. It happens. And it's the same weakness that Survivalist had in the previous game. Where he just doesn't make army. And I'm not sure exactly what the long-term plan is here. But it almost feels like he wants to go fast castle in the night. So these ranged units need to come help against the walls. Great job from Tomate, by the way. He made outposts over here. And he also added a lot more fishing ships, too, which a lot of players forget if they're trying to contest the, the water. Also, speaking of, the dock is now up. Fire ship didn't do much to help there. And now we have another dock being spotted. So there's going to be another dock from Tamate. Has uh, one ranged unit out right now, and that's it. Survivalist... He's adding houses. He's adding a mill that's not on berries. He has lots of fish. He doesn't know about this, though, but he's Japanese. Guys, I think we've seen the same thing. Like, Tomate tries to do so much, but he never really commits to one thing. I think that's the issue. Is like, he's trying to do everything, which is what he did in the previous game. And he, he hasn't been able to have any success anywhere because he's not full commit, right? You've got one dock here. A survivalist may be surprised here. You had one archer, right? Like, the no more archers after that because he's producing on water. Scouts, you kind of understand. You understand not making more scouts. But he's tried so many different things, and survivalist just walls and adds fish. He's like, oh, okay, and then now I'm two docks versus one. It must be so frustrating for Tomate. Survivalist is playing it perfect, though. This is precisely how you should play it. Things could have changed if that initial villager would have been protected, though, because there's no way you would deny the dock with a fire galley. A galley would deny it. The dock would always go up, though, even if it's a low HP villager, because you can wall out the fire, as stupid as that sounds. Uh, T90, do you think Japanese is a mid-tier Civ? I think they're top five, if not top three on this type of map. Uh, otherwise, in, like, Arabia, I would say they're mid-tier, yes. Very good. They're one of the best on this type of map. So, Eco KD is 1 0. So, Survivalist still has killed more Eco than his opponent, though that may change in a moment. And we might see Survivalist say, you know what? I need to make a second dock here. I could see that being the case. He's protected here for the most part. You do have the repair villagers mattering a lot, but he's fine. I guess he actually can't make a second dock here because of the situation, so. Both on the way to Castle Age. I want to see what Survivalist's plan is. He did drop a tower here. And I could see him maybe wanting to go for Knights because he has the food eco secured. Always feels like one of the best strategies when you have food eco. We're going to have ranges for Tomate, who at the end of the day is still applying tons of pressure all the time. And um, it looks like the, the long-term plan will be water, but also uh, Cav Archers. I'd love to see this archer, or any archer for that matter, kill this vill. As silly as that sounds, just like sit it here and make it so survivalists can't repair with that. It's a tiny thing, but like that villager shouldn't be able to repair here if you have a ranged unit. In the end, the scouts are going to do the job, I guess. And well played to Mate. Yeah, it looks like everything will go down here for survivalists in the end. And he has lost his fish there. Took a long time though, right? A stable there for Survivalist. Market's his best friend, by the way. He'll probably be using that. And Survivalist 
has not done anything aggressive yet again here. Just defense, defense, defense. But let's look at resources collected. It's so even. Oh my goodness. Oh. One stable from Survivalist, two ranges from Tamate. Personally, I'd like to see three ranges and two stables. I'd like to see a little bit more. Because their resources are, are crazy right now. We'll see as the game goes on how things will look. I think if Cav Archers are out, generally I think I prefer the Huns. But like, Halb Archer is really strong with Japanese. I think the Japanese Death Ball is actually better than Huns. But it's less mobile and it's awkward as we see. Interesting choice here. Double range from Survivalist. Um, Survivalist went for his water upgrade so he could defend his fish. And he might even consider sending a villager to dock one of the, you know, his opponent's pawns now. Really doesn't want to lose out on any of the pawns, but can you imagine just sneaking a dock up here? A couple fires kills all the fish so quickly. Nice micro there from Survivalist. That was the perfect demo. And now the Cav Archers are here. And Survivalist needs an answer. Now the Knights are here as well. And Tamate's going to need an answer for that. Tamate's playing open. Knights, they'll destroy you playing open if you don't have walls. And so Tamate needs to react a little bit. On his way to breaking through here. Still not sure what the ranges are for for Survivalist. And now he tries to place a house wall. And it's 56 eco versus 47, but again, it feels like Tamate has so much more work to do. And he's going to try and push Siege in the middle. Survivalist lost two villagers over here. It's 14 to 14 on the KD right now. And the Knights got pushed away. Also, hello, Bring Me Biscuits. Long time no see. Love to see horse collar in these situations. You do need to transition into farms, something we're not seeing a lot of right now from Tamate. But it is always something you want to do. The Cav Archer's there. Moved away. That villager survives. Siege will be on the way, and this is where Tamate will try and push this. If Survivalist can't take gold, Survivalist is finished. Again, like, can you just sit back and boom this whole time? Three TCs, no army! Well, I, he has eight knights, actually. It's not like he has no army. Uh, four knights are actually going to be over here. But Tamate notices it. His awareness has been awesome. And I, I love the monk idea as well. I'm not sure I like the siege if the cav archers are ever not next to the siege, right? Because the knights can go for an easy pickoff. You can tell he really wants to stand next to his siege at the moment. <clears throat> okay, splitting up. This is the beauty of knights, right? You can just run around all the time. More knights running in this way. We've got three separate groups here from Survivalist. So, so much for not having army. And he has horse collar, so his farming eco will be real, really be spiking things up for him. But can he counter the cav archers? Tamate with some excellent defense there. Still needs to push. And he's going to dive. And he's going to hit his own cav archers. And he just feels like, I have to do damage, I have to do damage, but that was so bad. But maybe it's good. Maybe I'm wrong, actually. Obviously, hitting his own units was not something he planned for. And I don't think he knew there was a town center here either. He also has to pay attention to this, which he has the Cav Archers for, he has the Monk for, but he can't keep up with it. And so he's got to run back to his TC. A lot will die there. And now Survivalist has a few crossbows without upgrades, and the pressure is on. The pressure is on right now. Not sure about the crossbow choice. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of things that are happening right now. And he's maybe not sure what he can commit to in the long term. And these Cav Archers want to be free, man. <laughs> okay. This is, this is a lot of idle time right now. But, I mean, they're just so focused on the fight. So we can't pay attention to how pretty things are. And, oh my god, I, he keeps trying to kill his own units. But okay, he's able to get back with his main group. And he's able to pressure this TC. Now, if Survivalist realizes that that's weak, he could use his crossbows against it. But man, is he under pressure right now. Okay. More and more siege coming out. Yes, indeed. 
Survivalist adding his own siege. Tamate, same theme as before. Has or has had the lead with aggression. Didn't get the aggression he wanted early, but man, oh man, has he been smothering Survivalist since. It'll be interesting to see how the micro looks here now. Because crossbows are actually, I think they're easier to micro. And they, they fire a little bit faster than cav archers. They have one more range. Mm. But man, it, it, it's just the siege difference. And, you know, something Tamate is missing is maybe a villager or two to repair these. But at the moment, he's starting to farm, right? And if you start to farm, if you start to look at home more because you think you have a lead, you could miss out on some stuff with your attack. Let's see what happens here. He seems to be paying attention. Well, didn't see that coming. And because it was never repaired, that weak mangonel gets picked off in a situation where if it was full HP, it never would have been. Survivalist with more siege. It's hard to be patient in these instances. You, you want to go for the kill constantly. And the defender always has an advantage. And yet again, another shot there. And now suddenly, survivalist army count is looking really good. And he could maybe move out a little bit. And again, no repairing. So Tamate has to fire and hope. And he does kill three units. And in the end, not too bad for Tamate because he could take out some units from survivalists at the same time. He's going to go for the siege. So many cav archers are dying, though. Oh, my word. 25 cav archers, 19 crossbows right now. These two are playing out of their minds. We have another TC for Tamate. That's CC number three. I wonder if, like, siege pushing from the hill would make a lot more sense for Tamate, right? Like, he didn't do it because of the tower. But he doesn't... He seems to not really enjoy the idea of pushing up against tower fire. But that's where the gold... This is where you want to push because that's where the gold is, right? And you could have taken him off of gold for so long. Survivalist would have this gold, but still. Nothing on stone for Tamate yet. Seems like these villagers will be stone miners. Survivalist will want a castle on this hill. He could go for a safe castle like over here. But he will definitely want a castle. And I think his, his army is actually a bit stronger right now. Because of the firing speed of crossbows. The HP isn't there, but I think his firing speed and the micro potential is insane. As we see... No! Oh, wow! <laughs> what a save! What an insane save. He didn't lose that Manganel. Well, now Thumbring's coming in. So now my mind's changing a little bit. Still, though, Survivalist needs this area. And Tamate, if you don't repair your Manganels, I might actually scream. Like, it's, it's such a basic thing that people do these days. It's something that he could easily do. Actually, he just wants to break in the house, I guess. And here come what looks like repair villagers. Mm, 28 crossbows. Survivalist still moving forward. Has enough for a castle now. We'll see the siege workshop and we'll not like that. I think, I think Tamate can pounce on this now. Oh, that's an amazing shot. <clears throat> And this feels like it's okay. Forcing survivalists to make a castle where his farms are is okay. But are you going to deal with this, I guess? Survivalists will lose villagers. Tamate will lose some cab archers. Unfortunate that he's losing them, but still getting lots of kills. Do not get trapped in here with your cab archers, Tamate. Survivalists... I'd be tempted, man. Oh my god, dude. Oh, I'm so stressed right now. Is it worth it for Tamate to be here? I guess it is. That's crazy, man. He's got army back here, though. He's going to chase down Survivalist. This is an incredible game. I love this Cav Archer, too. Tamate's looping the siege around, so he can either save his units or maybe break through and run back here. And now the TCs from Tamate are a problem, but I don't think he has the army count yet. I think he really needs one Manganel to come home, and then maybe it's better off for him. Cav Archer's running through was a brilliant idea. It was so bold. Survivalist needs to take this gold, needs to take this gold. There should be no way back for him right now. Oh, man. Tamate diving early, and he will take out the siege, but the crossbows are still very much a threat there for Survivalist. That's not bad. Neither is this, right? The TC killed a few units. You've got some scorpions, and suddenly the army count's looking really bad for Tamate compared to what it was before. But he's killing so much eco! 
He's killing Eco all the time, everywhere. Also taking this engagement, which is, a, again, a questionable engagement, but he's doing so much. Their elo, more or less, about 2,100. Uh, they've both been around 2,200, though. I think Tamate actually hit 2k3 before. Maybe Survivalist did as well. So their elo, though, is probably like 2150 or 2200 if you check. Survivalist has done such a good job. I know he's lost a lot, and he's even going to lose this TC. But he's done such a good job to keep his pop up and to get value from this army. Like This army got value that should have never really happened. Uh, and so his micro and unit control there has been stellar. But obviously, he's lost so much at home. And Tamate has the eco lead. Tamate is going to drop a castle there. And he's on his way to imp. I think this might be the end for Survivalist. He needs like a lucky shot uphill. He does have gold. He does have stone. Something Tamate can see if he's paying attention. He's actually making stables over here. So we could raid from the side, which is an interesting choice. But yeah, he should be thinking, where is my opponent going to have his population now? My opponent's going to have his population over here. Nice little crossbow army from Survivalist. Just like the small things that he's done to try and counter. But Tamate sees it because of the outpost. Sends some skirms over. Treb should take out Survivalist Castle. Survivalist it might even lose this TC. He doesn't have a siege workshop. And Tamate... He finally got him, right? Like, he finally has been able to get this guy who just refuses to die and is so stubborn in early feudal. Uh, that'll be dealt with. But yeah, like, Survivalist still isn't clicked up. He loses all of his crossbows. He still can't take this gold, this gold, this gold. Even if he clears this, I mean, like Kev raids on the sides, and this game is super over. There's a castle, though. Yep, Tamate parked there, parked there, now sees the castle. You just gotta treb it down. Treb everything down, and we go into game three. What a great game. This, this has been so cool, man. Everyone's playing so good. It does, like, still bring up disappointment to me that I'm out. Like, I can't get over that personal disappointment because I want to play with these players. I want to play these types of games. The series I had was... Well, it was clowny, right? Just Fast Castle, Unique Unit against me, and it got me, and... I, but I'm also, like, because I encounter these players and play these players all the time and know them pretty well, I'm also really happy for them that they're playing this well and excited to see more, obviously. And I said it, like, if you're ever playing Tamate in a series, you always ban Cross. I don't know what Survivalist banned first, but I would always ban Cross. He's super good on Cross. And I don't see how Survivalist survives this particular game. Um, and he calls the GG. The score's 1-1. What a series, man. I mean, Survivalist can defend the first five times. Or the, or the ten times or whatever. But the 11th, the 12th, the 13th attempt from Tamate is going to break the guy. And, you know, that's that's the big question with Survivalist, right? I think, you know, going three TCs, but not having any real attempt at, at main battle was his issue this game. Now, you could see how it almost worked because he had he, he had a really good defense. And then Tamate had some problems after that. But in the end, Tamate, I think it was the correct move to push this direction. Perfect castle spot. And even though he was really unlucky with the starting villager, he still contested water on both sides and played into lots of production this game, uh, whether it be knights, cab archers, etc. So, oh boy, more new Portuguese, really? Okay. Well, uh, ladies and gents, welcome, welcome, welcome. We have another decider game in round two. These are the best of threes. Whoever wins this will move on to a best of five, and then they have to win that and another best of five to make it into gold. So the competition's tough. But as I expected, once I saw that Cross was the home map for Tamate, I thought we would get here. And I'm really curious how things go. Because uh, also mods, I don't know what the crap's happened. But we've got the Mongols, one of the best civilizations for this map and late game, which this map can oftentimes bring us. Uh, there's Hunt everywhere, so Tamate's going to spend most of his time just pushing in some deer, which for me, a Rudolph right now. Sorry, Rudolph. Um, and Survivalist has gone for the Portuguese. 
And there were recent changes to the Portuguese, which means they bring in wood when they collect berries, and there's double berry bushes. But I still have a feeling that if he doesn't go all in, if he's not really aggressive, that he's going to have problems against Mongols. Like, Mangadai are the go-to unit eventually uh, in this one. But that's going to take a long time and a lot of resources, and... It's possible that maybe Survivalist wants to try a fast castle or something along those lines. Um, I guess we'll see. So, uh, Bafia says, yeah, I asked because I was pretty impressed indeed. But then again, I've been watching LEL videos for several days. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, we've been a little light on the low, low ELO content. Uh, we'll have to do that Tuesday. Haven't had much on YouTube for a while, which I feel kind of bad about. Yeah, so the map can be uh, kind of baity. <laughs> uh, like, it looks like you can wall and play save, but it's actually a lot of work to do. So sometimes players will uh, try and wall up and then they get punished for it. We did see Mongols versus Portuguese on Serengeti earlier, and Mongols won. But um, I think this is actually a little better for Portuguese in terms of chances because... Just just because the wall potential is definitely there, whereas on Serengeti, it isn't. Though, in hindsight, actually, there were full walls in that game. So, we'll see. Um, clearly, the players believe in Portuguese. Yeah, I think if I'm Tamate, I just open scouts. Um, he hasn't killed a single villager with scouts in this series, and he's gone scouts each time. But it's still good map control. It, at the very least, forces survivalists to go for smaller walls instead of full walling his base out here. And players tend to be pretty far apart, so I don't really like archers on this map because it takes so long. So, uh, Correct. The standard ravines only has hunt. And that is the standard DE version, but that would make Mongols far too strong, so we lessen the amount of hunt, even though it's still a lot. And then we also added berries because I wanted the map to be more dimensional. Multi-dimensional. All right. Now, I don't think we've seen Portuguese every set, but we've seen Portuguese more than you would expect in best of threes. So. Anyways, uh, well, I'm expecting Survivalist will go feudal. I think that's a safe play, and I think he'll know it. As much as he is a defensive player, it's more so like he'll open in feudal defend and then get to castle age and play towards his passive play from there but i'm sure you picked up on it already he hadn't even placed the lumber camp yet so he's been able to get the wood for his houses and now his lumber camp all from just taking the berries because of that new bonus and now we have tomate on the way up for what most likely will be scouts i uh, did wall a little bit uh he'll need a barracks and he actually needs more villagers on wood right now. The food count's going to be fine. And yeah, there's going to be his barracks. And probably needs more on wood, which he'll do soon. All right. Survivalist trying to scout his opponent. It's very easy to find your opponent on this map. You just got to wait till the till there's a bit of a dip. And uh, barracks is still like kind of just sitting there. Tons more villagers heading over to the wood. This guy's being annoying. I hate it when that happens. He's going to chop a tree on the back. This is a fast uptime from Tamate, but I don't know if he's going to be able to do immediate damage. We'll see what his resources look like. Also, I hate this wall, especially with there being more hunt here. I was thinking maybe he scout this and wall to here. Mm, survivalist. Um, what are you doing, dude? How do you run into this TC on this map? Oh, that hurts so much. He's got a weak scout now. His opponent has a full HP scout, and his opponent's going to be adding more scouts. <laughs> so, uh, double trouble there for Survivalist. That's actually a first for me. I think I've never seen someone... No, 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 that's that's not true. I did see it one time before, in, and it was actually in Platinum Leaf. Here comes the scout here from Tamate, and he's got to be thinking, what's he doing? Is he on stone? Is he on gold? And survivalists can quick wall build, so you got to be real careful if you're Tamate. And he doesn't even go for it. And it's going to be spearmen for survivalists. It's going to be scouts for survivalists. And Tamate's small walls are actually looking pretty smart now. 
It's going to be tougher for Survivalist to do damage, but if Survivalist gets the full walls, he'll actually secure more resources, including extra berries. What? Oh, I guess there are. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's normally extra berries, I guess. And a scout goes down for Tamante, so Survivalist is fine. Hmm. Obviously, he'll have his own scouts out. <clears throat> we'll see what the execution looks like with their economy. It's almost like Survivalist is waiting to see if this hunt is taken. <laughs> it's kind of funny to me. I don't think he is, but... Man, the berries could be awesome if Survivalist notices it. And Tamate is running around now. But there's a Spearman on the way. And it's very hard to kill villagers here because you're going uphill. Oh, oh, Survivalist needs to hit, hit the Palisades, hit the Palisades, hit the Palisades! Scouts are in now. Oh, that's going to be so annoying. That should be a Deadville. Should be. Hello? Deadville? Deadville? That's a, a very difficult quick wall because of the uh, dip there. I don't know why I always struggle to find the word to describe this thing. <laughs> the ravine. <laughs> okay, so villager killed by Tamate. He'll be happy with that. Andy's got his walls. I think the eco, though, for survivalist is just as good, despite losing the vill. And again, the potential to take more berries if you want is completely fine. <clears throat> In open maps, do you think Portuguese are better than Mongols? No, no, no. I think Mongols are better. I think the more closed the map, the better it becomes. Well, it's a bit tricky because Mongols can be good on closed maps too, but... I think the uh, Castle Age is better for the Portuguese if it's like an arena style map, let's say. Plenty of Spearmen for Survivalist, so he's fine. Uh, Tomate, not really that interested in switching it up too much. And he's actually going for forging here, which seems a little excessive, truthfully. Um, I'm not sure you really need to get forging. Also, there's a hole there. <gasps> oh, Tomate. Oh my god. Oh my god, there's a hole. He's he's not going to be able to do damage. And he's now going to deal with this hole here. And Survivalist could do so much here with this. Survivalist just got a lifeline, man. But Tamate does react to it. Very well done, actually. And he's going to have double Spearman as well. So he's still got to worry about this, but... Might actually end up being better for him. Remember, he's got forging, and Survivalist, I think, is looking at this. And so Survivalist is going to lose all of his scouts. He won't kill a single one. And he didn't kill a single scout here either. So I guess in the end, for Tamate, it works out. But obviously, that was crazy. Food count looking good for Survivalist. He's finished with his berries, and he's now on 11 farms. He'll expand that number. Oh! Why did the vill path that way? I'm not sure. But the scouts still have to run. And here we've got 10 farms. That's actually four scouts. Doesn't look like it, but it is. Survivalist has to be creative. Gate will go down. No, it won't! He hit the gate! Now Survivalist will switch to the house. Scouts are going to run around. Survivalist adding more scouts to chase this down. I think sometimes you've just got to say, well, I have to deal with this with Spearman because I don't want to be Castlage later as well. And we've got a range for Tamate, which tells me he maybe wants to go Cav Archers. And... Doink! Gets a Villager. So that's two Villagers down now. Uh, T90, how often do you play against Kongan? I played against Kongan a lot. Probably like 50 times. Maybe 100. I'd say 50. I played against Kongan a little bit more than I played against Tamate and Survivalist, but I played against these guys a lot as well, so. But okay, essentially what Survivalist did was he added three scouts, so he's able to match these three scouts, and now he's going to go up, and he's transferred to stone, so he wants to go for orcing guns. Good job from Tamate this game. I think he's played it clean. I think... He's certainly been the better player for one and a half games. Half being this previous game, obviously, one of the other ones. He's looking for weak vills at the moment that he could pick off. 
And he's just going to go for this one with forging. And he's going to get it, too. That's very well done from him. Could get one more if he wants to toss these scouts away. Because you're going to die to scouts anyways. So you just look for a weak one, and then you just commit to it. He's looking, he's looking, he's looking. I think he saw that one was weak. He's not going to get it. Well played, Survivalist. Uh, yeah, Tomate did patch the hole. Tomate really needs a new wood line, but maybe that'll be for town centers later on. And I still, despite, you know, the Vil kills and whatnot, I still fear for Tomate because I've seen Orkin guns in my nightmares. I've seen them in my dreams. I've seen them in games. I, I will see them in nightmares for weeks. They're so good. Also, having the additional scouts is so nice for, in the long run to scout other areas of the map. Now, I just don't think if this goes long, though, the Portuguese are very good, but that's only compared to the Mongols. Hmm. Should be Cav Archers. Should be Bod Canero. Should be... Ooh, University! Oh, God, his Wood Eco is disastrous, though. I thought he'd go for the TC. Survivalist should be fine, then. He'll just drop a Town Center, which is very normal on this map. Like, you're far away. You don't need to rush Ballistics, typically. So he'll catch up in Vils, and that Vil situation won't be a bummer for him at all. Really hate this decision from Tomate, but it's, it's like a... It's a stylistic thing. We have to remember that. And he feels like he has to be aggressive against Survivalist all the time. What makes the piano cannons good? Well, it's it's timing and forcing fights all the time. I actually think it's going to be more of just the castle for defense for Survivalist than anything. There's, there's like almost no counter to them, to mass working guns. The problem and the weakness of mass working guns is just how much time it takes. And there's the TC now. But yeah, Survivalist will catch up in Vils and probably surpass his opponent too. And Tamate does not see the castle at all. Um, almost feels like Survivalist is letting this go up. No Bodkin arrow either for Tamate. He's, excuse me, he's going to let this go down. So the Cav Archers run next to the castle and then they die to the castle. But isn't that also risky? Oh boy. I don't, I don't, li I don't like that decision there, Survivalist. I think you could have been okay there. But now you need army for this. He's got some knights, but certainly more awkward than he would want things to be at the moment. I think he was trying to be too fancy. Thankfully, Cav Archers can't kill a thing, apparently. And more of these are going to loop around. And now we have Ballistics, and Tamate definitely has the lead. Organ Guns and Knights, though. No Bod Canero yet for Tamate, which I'm going to assume that he doesn't realize. Okay, got housed a little bit. Still trying to send his Cav Archers over here because he realizes this is open. Things are very compact for both players. Another TC for Survivalist. There's a theme here, guys. I think, like, organ guns do enough damage where if you've got five or six of them, this is an easy clear. Especially with no Bod Canero. I don't think Tomate knows. Also, the scouts ran in underneath the TC, which is kind of funny. He'll go down now. Definitely thinks he has ballistics, and he's going for another range. Big investment into army here, which is not necessarily bad. He's also going to drop the town center, and it's a town center on stone. Mangadai would be even better than cab archers in the long run. Survivalist has been forced to make a lot of uh, sacrifices economically. Because he had to mass the organs and make the knights. So he's not in the spot he would want to be with some upgrades. Got five range versus seven range, though. Sure, you have ballistics. He's going to check now. He's going to be like, what? He's going to go to his blacksmith and he's going to check and see, I didn't have Bod Canero. Certainly, right? Surely. I'd feel so bad if he lost because of no Bodkin. If he had Bodkin, he could be all over this. I'm going to take the hunt. Survivalist, still not sure what his long term is. It looks like it's still organ guns. He's going to get a good connection there and Tomate has to respect it. 
Still no Bod Canero, which is so helpful. Plus one attack and plus one range. And the organ guns, I think, are the better unit than if there's no Bodkin as Tomate runs away again. Also, Knight's counterattacking here. Just randomly, Survival is killing a few villagers. Not bad. Actually, that's really nice. The organ gun is so big. Uh, the organ mass is so big, is what I meant to say. Both players about 17 farms. Lots of idle time there because of the raids. If Tomate hasn't realized now, like, maybe he knows and he's like, I need Vils instead. But there's a risk here that he doesn't realize until he's an imp. <laughs> like, when he goes to click Bracer. The survivalist, he does not want to lose this game. He's going to stonewall that side. But now he's getting pressured over here. Not the biggest deal, though. He's got a TC. And there's Bod Canero. Okay. Finally. I don't know if you want to dive here. Tomate is a risky boy, but... Or he likes to take a lot of risks, I should say. Oh, organs are coming back. That's a lot of organs. I think I favor the organs. It depends on how it's microed. If Tomate can have runners in front that run side to side, the organs can't get ballistics, right? So that could be a problem. Oh, boy. Is he going to dive? Oh, Survivalist is moving out. He's, he never expected his opponent to be this crazy. And his opponent is this crazy. And he goes right in. Actually could stay in here too. Survivalist is thinking I have to hit him now. But the Cav Archers could run all the way through here. Survivalist has some big problems. And now it actually becomes the right move for Survivalist to continue to go forward. Because you've already taken damage. You have to do damage to your opponent. Wow. Also, how, how do the villagers survive that? Yo, how do you counter this many organs, though? Ah! <laughs> oh, it's the same problem I faced earlier. I don't think you can kill that unless you have your main group there, which may require you to loop the whole way around to get back home. Look how fast they take out archer ranges. The panic is must be setting in. Tamate has to go home. Uh, um, he doesn't want to go home. He's adding more ranges. Takes some real confidence to just still stick around here. 78 villagers versus 85, by the way. Eco has been very close overall. I think, you know, the working guns are going to make the difference here with the Eco, though, for Tamate, because Tamate is going to have to, like, relocate a lot of villagers soon. Not a lot of farmers for survivalists. It's a big problem for him. It's 35 farmers for Tamate. He wants to go imp. And I think he wants to drop a castle behind this. Or maybe even next to his TC. Oh, and speaking of castles, disaster for survivalist. This is the last spot you want to castle in the back of your base. And Tamate just stood here the whole time. He's like, I don't care. I don't care about the organ guns in my base. Doesn't kill as many vills as you'd think, but that's just because Survivalist got that castle up fast, man. And Tomate is, yet again, with the Cav Archers and with the pressure, just so good. As he could click up to Imp right now. Still trying to mass more Cav Archers. Mm, he needs a building. He needs some stone. He needs a castle, and he's got a castle there. Crazy. Crazy confidence from this guy. Say, okay, so the question now is, what is survivalist long-term? Is this long-term organ guns? That's why I thought survivalist would not boom, because I feel like the situation calls for all-in aggression. But, you know, if it was we will have Imp in for Tomate in a moment. His cab archers are only going to get better. He's got a varied unit comp. There's so many civilizations that are better than Portuguese here. Hussar. Cav Archers. Mangadai. Siege Rams. But like, sorry, back to Portuguese. Uh, they're slow. They save units. You could sit in the corners forever with Fatoria, but... I just do not think it's a great civ in this spot. Unless you've already pushed your opponent. Economy's been better for Tomate behind the aggression, which is how you ideally you play Age of Empires 2. Obviously, you can have some sitting back from side from time to time. 
I don't know where these bills are going, but yeah, like, for the most part, you want a combination of things. The Vill Count's still there for survivalists. His orking guns are slowly running home. They look scared. I would be too. And yeah, Mang and I do bonus damage against organs as well. So that's definitely something that you, you called out correctly there, chat. And like Hindustanis, Gurjaras, Sicilians, uh, Berbers. Uh, there's so many civs that you could put in a draft that are better than Portuguese. But we are here now, right? And Survivalist made this decision. He's got to live with it with 32 organ guns. <laughs> That's so many organ guns, though. <laughs> it's insane. I think it could beat imp armies with 42 organ guns. <laughs> Tomate is gonna be... <laughs> Tomate is gonna be so surprised. The thing that Survivalist does really well is he commits, man. Like, I think at times there's an issue with balance for him and strategy, but he just is really good mechanically, makes a lot of TCs, lots of eco, and lots of units. <laughs> That is just insane. Run away! <laughs> Run away! There's Bracer. Survivalist is still in this if his next castle can go towards the middle somehow. Um, and if he can, like, get trebuchets out then. Like, if this army can't be killed and he could get force fights down the middle, he's definitely still in this. And he has the lead right now, but I just still wonder what's his long term and he's just still making more organ guns. Yeah, I agree, by the way. I think it was incorrect from Survivalist to ever come back. I think, like, Tamate making this castle here should be a problem if Survivalist continues to push. But okay, let's see how I go now. I mean, there's not that many Mangadai. And Chemistry isn't in yet. So I think the Organ Guns will take a good fight. This is not a bad fight for Survivalist at all. And I guess for Tamate, he just wants to get rid of this ball before it could be upgraded to elite, but Survivalist in the game, clicks up to Imp. Tomate behind in Vils, and doesn't really have a lot of control either. Survivalist has some amazing castle spots for the long term, as does Tomate. And tell Tomate is just like, oh, come on, man. I can't believe I haven't killed these things yet. Still no elite Mangadai yet, by the way. And uh, I don't like the like have addition right now. I don't think a meat shield matters when there's so much damage output from the organs. Now, if you run back and forth with the like have in front and kind of like dodge, I like it a lot more. Organs are an insane unit. They're one shotting, right? They seem to be, anyways. But Tomate's just taking the fight. He feels like I've got the economy. It's easier for me. The manga I do enough. And I'm always producing more. And survivalist, what's your backup plan? You've known your opponent's going to switch into Cav Archers. And that could lead to Mangadai, surely. I don't know, man. I'm not sure I like this. Uh, maybe here first? <laughs> maybe here? Like, uh, it's a little too close. Survivalist adding stables now. So, I mean, Portuguese have full blacksmith upgrades on their stable units. They only get light Cav, though. I guess it's a castle to secure this gold. By the way, relics could be coming in right now for Tomate. He has one. I like the awareness from him with the leftover units on everything else on the map. And now he now sees this. Survivalist will not die quietly, especially in a best of three final game. Survivalist is... The, the thing that I found against him is you could be winning for an hour and you still... The game goes on um, and he can be at 200 pop. It's incredibly frustrating, but it's the quality that he has and a quality that maybe suits Portuguese with Vitorias. I just don't know. Well, this could be risky. I'm not sure I like this. Uh, Tomate obviously succeeded before. It, it seems like an approach that really works well against Survivalist because Survivalist always seems to chase too. But Survivalist is going for like Kev. He... he has the working gun still. He's got 28 of them. And Tomate doesn't have that main group yet. And maybe Survivalist could start to push this. Tomate's being so fancy at the moment. Is it too fancy? He's going to go capped ram. Also, not a fan of capped ram. I think just like Hussar Mangadai is fine. But get elite Mangadai first. Oh, he has it. I missed that. Okay. Survivalist selling the wood. The prices are rough. 
The castle numbers are there. Tamate with the Treb now. Survivalist, no Trebs yet. That's what I want to see from him. He doesn't have to rely on production right now of his castles with organs because he has so many of them. Would really like to see him just go Trebs and then like have in front, bring the organ guns with the Trebs and push those castles down because you know Mongols need that. This is also a great castle and we see what it does there for him. A survivalist with some light cap back here. May end up getting through. And these types of things add up. But Tamate with the house wall. The double house wall. The triple house wall, actually. And survivalist has made no attempt to push this area. There's now a Treb there. And he's coming back home. Unsure of what to do. Still only 22 manga die for Tamate. But he's got the castles, man. These Mangadai are still being so frustrating for Survivalist, who's just reacting, reacting, reacting. Tamate, right now he wants to kill these organs. He's not happy with those. But in the, in the process, though, he could lose his treps. So he's now deciding we've got to protect the treps. He might lose his treps. You know me and my triple trebbing. I don't like to see it. I prefer you show up with four trebs or none at all. He showed up with two, loses one now. Survivalist is on a gold in the north that Tamate has scouted. We could see a castle for him here shortly. And Survivalist still with Light Cav, which just excites nobody right now who's wanting to see the best for Survivalist. The survivalist is surviving, but is he thriving? Oof, man. Siege Ram 2. I think if Survivalist didn't have this gold right now, it's a lock. And we'll see if Tamate notices it because he's going over to the gold right now. And if this castle goes up as well, it feels like it's a lock. I don't know, though. I've, again, I've seen crazy things from this survivalist guy. Like, he's got to make a commitment. Yeah, okay, he's got four traps. He's actually going to do it. Survivalist could win this game because Tamate never engaged against the organs, and Tamate. I, I don't know. He hasn't gone for the kill or blow yet. Four traps from Survivalist. He's got a crazy death ball of army. He could go for Red's castles and Red could start to slowly fall apart. It's possible. That's a great castle, though. Oh, no. Don't lose your traps. Don't lose your traps, Survivalist. Survivalist will lose this castle. He's getting elite organ gun in that castle. In that castle. You have so many castles. Not that castle. Tell me he realizes. Tell me he realizes and switches it. He must know. Because he just clicked the castle. He'll lose the lead organ gun though. At 96%. So now he needs to click it in another castle. And it is. Okay. Still just trying to build up what could be his final little ball. Also, I would love Onager here from Red. Drill Onagers would be amazing against the Mass Organs, I think. Other Onagers, maybe not. Oh, man. The raids are going to start coming in. Survivalist, you need to take a fight now, man. It's got to be soon. He's going to lose another castle. He has Elite Organs, but he has no Relics. He's been in the corner for so long. He's a great player. He plays a lot of ladder games. He's played more than majority of players in Silver, actually, on the ladder. Uh, it's a little bit of a que It's like what you get with Survivalist, maybe, right? Like, the first game was like this brilliant thing. You never see Malay do that well, so you get excited about it and say it's a brilliant strategist. And then, you know, here, you're just looking at the organ guns. Like, can they actually do it? And maybe they can. Maybe they can do it. The Mangadai are going to run to the back corner. Survivalist still has his trebs, though. So the organ gun's still doing a decent job. And Castle stands for Survivalist as he's still producing organs. But Survivalist is at the limit long term with resources. There's no doubt, right? Like, look at the stone and the gold count right now for Tamate. Tamate just has, he's having an issue now where he, again, he's being really fancy trying to raid. He just needs to address the main group a little bit. Get a few more Mangadai on the field. Trickling in some units because everything's stressful at the moment. He just has to do that, and he should be good. Can he do it, though? So he's getting masonry. He's clearly worried, and his Hussars continue to get fed into the organs. 
Farming eco for survivalist. Raiding for survivalist. I told you, he won't quit, man. He won't quit. He refuses to quit. By the way, what does Seadram accomplish for Tamate here? I don't think it's accomplished enough. Love to see Blast Furnace come in as well. Seadram's going to pressure the, the side walls. He continues to just ignore the main ball. He's really worried about it, but maybe, maybe now it changes. Seadram to soak fire. Mangadai behind. He doesn't soak that many shots, but there will be Hussars in front. And he's keeping his castle up. If he gets too close here, Survivalist will lose his trebs to the Mangadai. And I think that's what Tamate's trying to do. He's just like, let me just keep this castle up. Even if I lose a lot of Mangadai, it's going to be worth it for me. Uh, that said, he's losing a ton. Mm. Dang. <laughs> Survivalist is not going to quit, man. He's going to head over to that gold now. Also, that'll eventually be a raid. <laughs> uh, I like he gets crop rotation too, yeah. That's a nice spot for the Mangadai to hit the Treb, though. That's the real issue. Like, not even the Organ Guns. He needs gold as well to actually push the castles. And the Siege Rams have finally done something for Tamate. Tamate, the Spaniard! Crazy ladder player, who I, I said would be good in this because he's so good on a variety of settings. Um, he's going to start to peel Survivalist apart. Layer by layer. Yep, Hussars are producing immediately from these stables. The Mangadai take the villagers. The Mangadai will take this. This raid shouldn't do much. I mean, the golds are pretty much already gone there, right? The Siege Ram's even going for the TC of all things. And Red's just like, I have the golds. I have the control. And I will force reactions all the time. Anyone else really impressed with how, how both players have played with their styles, though? I think Tamate is just... A, he's a beast in terms of how you should want to play the game. Multitasking God. Great value from his scouts in Feudal Age. He has his main push, but he's trying to use the sides at the same time with limited population to get max value. He has patience when he needs it. The only thing is, like, you, you see some cracks in the armor because the execution can sometimes falter with the main battle because it takes so much of his speed and his attention on the other stuff. Whereas, like, you know, the highest of levels, they're perfect execution with the main battle while they do the side things, but... Yeah, he's really good. We also have a Fatoria, which could be denied back here, which is not something you see every day. Because it is in the back corner. Get Onager, man! There's still 48 organs. I mean, it ain't over till it's over, but the Hussar raids... Like, I guess, I guess if Red had Mangadai over here... So, this would actually be the area to have some of your Mangadai. Because Survivalist doesn't have a single trap. The Hussar raids from this side with a couple rams would probably end it. And the Mangadai are actually just going to loop in this way, so... No, not a wonder for Survivalist. He's trying to get some extra resources with Fatoria. He won the first game. And he won the first game with a unique strat... And it's kind of coming back to haunt him now as he, oh, got the relic. Like that that specific game isn't coming back to haunt him, but the uh, the forced creativity perhaps is what's coming back to haunt him. He had a lot of faith in Portuguese here. And I just, I actually think there was a window too for him to maybe be able to push red, but that was in Castle Age and he, he ended up coming back to survive, uh, which I guess you expect. Look at this from Red. He's like, okay, where are the main? Where's the main group of organs? Organs kill everything. So we're just gonna wait till he moves the organs, and now we're gonna send the Rams in after that castle. He's been trying to get this castle for so long. Also, he knows about this, and yeah, we're gonna have the GG call from Survivalist here. He's gonna lose his middle castle. He's gonna lose all of his like gold control on this side, if you could call it control. Reg is simply running away from the organs constantly. And Survivalist Pop is going to drop pretty low here. Keep in mind, 20 of his pop space is actually just simply the Fatoria there. Red's probably just going to keep pushing from here. Look, just immediate Hussar production from here. He's got full vision. He's probably going to send villagers here to take this gold. Hussar's running in over here. 
Survivalist has 52 vills. But remember, he's out, right? If he loses this, he's out. And just like anybody, they would have wanted to get the win here and perform better, so... He still has a massive army, too. Like, I wouldn't resign if I had 140 pop on my screen. When you get about 100, that's when you feel like it's over. So I guess it's a little deceiving, too, because... You have two Fatorias. <laughs> so he actually does have 100 pop, but... Not actually. The Lonely Organs. Yeah, he, he will know. He will know it's over at this point, but he's trying. Can someone tell me who is in the group? Um, oh god. Oh jeez, which direction do you go? I guess you go in. <laughs> I, I guess we'll have to look at the bracket, but I'm really excited to see who Tamate faces next. I think from what I said, that I said Tomat whoever wins between Tomate and Survivalist would be... Uh, I think I think they would not be the favorite against whoever they would go up against next. Mangadai might act actually get killed, but obviously the rest of the map is still Tomate's and Survivalist is losing everything. So. Ah, winner plays Mihai. Yeah, that's going to be really tricky. I think Mihai can basically play like Tamate has played here, but better. Um, but I will say that I think Mihai will have weakness on mixed maps. So Tamate could definitely get wins there and maybe turn that into three wins. Mangadai all go down. Organ guns are like, yeah, we're amazing. Survivalist, you're 96 pop, man. <laughs> to what extent can you actually survive? <laughs> uh... <laughs> So, so happy and so pumped for Tamate, though. Obviously, bummer for Survivalist. But this sir, this silver group, the silver bracket, is just stacked with talent. We've got so many good players in our scene. And Survivalist, uh, I'm sure, don't freak out. People always want to freak out when they see a G. And they're like, oh, he was salty. I'm sure he said G, resigned, and then said GG after, okay? So don't worry too much. But anyway, Survivalist loses that series, but... Tamate comes back from 1-0 down. Kind of, sort of. Still a reverse sweep, even though it's only three games, so it doesn't feel as crazy, but the pressure was on for him. He had to win two straight against a player who's very hard to kill. And I think his strategy and his execution was more consistent throughout the series. And he, he fixed his problems from game one. In game one, he made a lot of army. And in that game, he didn't get the villager kills that he needed. And then survivalist defensive macro style uh, ended up, um, you know, costing Tomate the game. Uh, but, you know, game two, he was continuously aggressive and found reward. And then this game as well. Uh, so for survivalist, he is out and he will have to wait six months where he could try again like so many other people. But yeah. Um, you know, there's only so many spots. So Tomate is going to be up against a 2K4 player in Mihai from Romania who's super motivated. And I think he's actually my favorite to end up qualifying out of that group. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to cast that one, but it was good to get to cast Tamate apart from just like seeing him in ranked games where I'll play him or casting. Um, there's the resources there. Mongols dominant, but Tamate just fearless at times, running in underneath TCs, uh, you know, dodging shots, uh, tossing army away if he needed to for map control. Very, very good player.